So my name is Father Dan Grudy, and I'm a Holy Cross priest, and I'm a vice president and associate provost here at the University of Notre Dame. And I'm also a professor of uh, theology and global affairs. And uh, for the last uh, 25, 30 years, I've been doing research on migrant and refugee issues. And I've been going to different borders and different countries and different places around the world where people are crossing borders. And I've been trying to understand both the inner journey and the outer journey of migrants. That is what's going on inside them uh, as well, what they're thinking and feeling and, and experiencing, as well as uh, really what their journeys themselves are like. And that is what they're searching for and their experiences and what they go through and some of their challenges and difficulties and hopes and dreams. So it's been a, a wonderful gift of God to journey with these people and uh, also to share some of those experiences in different places like Oregon Catholic Charities. So I was invited out there some years ago by Sarah Granger to just share some reflections on theology and migration because um, I'm a human being, I'm a Christian, I'm a Catholic, uh, I'm a religious order priest. And my question is really how we think about God from the perspective uh, of the migrant refugee struggle. Not only what I say about them, but what they themselves say about their experiences. And to try to really ask, how do we think about God from this context? And how do they talk about God from this context? All of which deals with uh, the spirituality of immigrants, a pastoral response to migration, uh, and a theology of migration. And that is how we reframe the narrative around who they are, who we are, who we are together, ultimately before God. Most people, when they think about migrant and refugee issues, they don't think about theology. Most of the times, these are political hot button issues. Uh, this is looked at sociologically. This is looked at statistically. It's looked at culturally. It's looked at politically. But most people don't think about theology. Uh, and yet, for migrants and refugees themselves, who often have many, if not everything, taken away from them, often they will tell you that God is all they have left. So I think uh, inevitably we have to think about this issue because it is a human issue. Uh, God is present and at work in this issue or with the people who are involved in this issue. And so uh, the reason why it's important is because um, whether we consciously do theology or not, we're, we're doing it all the time. Uh, we're doing it all the time because God is that which we give our hearts to, uh, whether we're conscious or not, and that which we most value and that which we really give our hearts to says something about what we believe and ultimately what we think is of ultimate value. So we're constantly theologizing whether we see we're doing that or not. And why it's important with migration is because the um, there are a lot of narratives that shape our understanding of this issue. There are often unconscious narratives and they're narratives that have been imbibed in us through uh, public media, through uh, all kinds of discourse and political wrangling about this issue. People have a an operative understanding of this issue, and it's shaped by what we've imbibed and what we've chosen. What theology does is it reframes this issue. And the core of, of theology of migration is this, from a Christian perspective, which I'm most interested in, that God so loved the world that he migrated into the sinful and broken territory of our human existence. And there he reconciled himself with us on the cross so that we can migrate back to our homeland. And so all of life, if you will, is a migration. Uh, and Thomas Aquinas said that the overarching narrative of his Summa Theologica is that everything comes from God and everything returns to God. So if we look at this metaphorically, uh, we see that life itself is a migration. And the church itself sees uh, its own identity as being a pilgrim people, that we have no lasting home here, or that we're really in transit. And so if life itself is a migration, then it's not about us and them, not only those who are settled and those who are moving, but it's about all of us. And so how we respond to migrants in our midst and to Christ's hidden presence among them determines who we become. One thing for me to talk about what this means from where I sit here at Notre Dame, um, or even when I'm doing research in the field, um, but it's another thing for people themselves to speak about this. So I've really um, tried this to start first with their stories and pay attention inductively to what they say. Uh, and, and so that's the first step is just listening to that. So one example of that, for example, one, one example is when I was giving a talk to a Catholic charities group in New Hampshire, 
there was a woman who came to me afterwards, and I had just made a brief mention of uh, Rwanda, where a million people were killed in 100 days because of uh, identity clashes between um, Hutus and Tutsis. Uh, and so she thanked me afterwards, and I, I, uh, and she told me she was from Rwanda, and she lived through the genocide. And so I listened to her for, you know, brief time. But I said, look, if 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 I can ever do anything, don't hesitate to contact me. So I gave her my contact information, and two weeks later, she calls me again, and she says, you know, there is something you can do for me. She says, my husband and I. Uh, would like you to work with us on writing a book about the search for God from the context of genocide. Uh, they were in the hotel, which was known as Hotel Rwanda, mm -hmm. and a hundred of, of roughly a hundred of 130 of their family members were killed within a three-month period. So they asked me, would I work with them on the search for God from the context of genocide? And this is one of these moments when immediately I said, I have to do this. I said, I knew, you know, I said, absolutely. I said, I would love to do this. Um, I said, but the second thing is I have no idea how to speak about God from the context of genocide. And I said, I've never lived through anything like that. Um, but I said, I'd love to walk with you in the search for that, that question, meaning to answer that question. So we did, it was a multi-year project and we did go down to Rwanda and we did kind of walk the grounds where they were. And uh, it was ultimately listening to them and letting them tell their story. And, and then out of that, just helping, you know, work with that story and to really draw out some of its theological dimensions. So it that's part of the job too, that there is a theological task. Uh, I think, um, uh, let me just say the first is kind of understanding those narratives and listening to them, but there is a theological task here, which it's not as straightforward sometimes as you'd think. And when I was, at one point I was uh, in Oxford on a sabbatical and I was at an interdisciplinary refugee center on migrant studies, interdis interdisciplinary um, study center. And they had people from all kinds of disciplines studying this, except for theology. And, and that kind of gap really, um, really, I, I noticed and I recognized that the theological test was to begin to um, articulate why this is a theological issue. And that's really what I began to do. That's really my, my work became clear to me is that, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm not trying to make a case for theology for any, um, you know, particular reasons other than the fact that people working in this issue, like Catholic Charities or other places, want to know the faith connections to this issue, because I think it begins to give a lot of strength and uh, support to the rationale why one does it. Well, it's critically important. Um, you know, we have, you know, 270, upwards of 270 million people migrating around the world, upwards of 60 plus million refugees in the world now, number keeps increasing. Um, and only one of 100 that apply for uh, basically refugee status determination, you know, uh, actually get it. And United States is a uh, one of the, historically, up until recent years, one of the biggest resettlers of refugees anywhere in the world. And the Catholic Church um, is the biggest resettler of refugees in the United States. In fact, if you were to take just the work of the Catholic Church in resettling refugees uh, in this country, it would be the second largest resettler of refugees in the world. So that that work is significant. I think just seeing you know how much the church is on the front lines and how much it's reaching out to the most vulnerable and how much they're the ones that stay around after everybody leaves, including international relief agencies. So Catholic Charities has a unique role in, in that whole mission because it does resettle the people that come through that whole process. And, um, and, and without that, where would they be? I mean, it's, um, these are people who have had a tremendous amount of rejection and persecution. Their lives have been threatened. They've gone through torture. If they're the ones who actually if they're in that 1% of 100, you know, there are probably uh, any number of cases of that 100 that still uh, would have similar cases. But these have they've been able to so uh, verify their vulnerability that they've actually qualified for this. Uh, you have no idea what it's like for, for people to kind of receive reception. Or should I say, you know, you know better than I even what how appreciative they are. But just to have a welcoming 
community on the other end or even someone to show you you know where you go to school how you kind of connect your kids you know where's an apartment how to go grocery shopping some people don't even know how to use credit cards or anything like that i mean so just just the work you do and helping resettle them is humanizing because that's really what it is is to bring out the humanity of these people they're not other kinds of people they're just human beings like you and me and the work of the church is to really help us become more human and to really bring out the dignity in each one of us and what a labor what a gift it is that you do all that work the predominant political narrative sees migrants as other the core of the gospel thinking is moving from otherness to oneness the fact is is that we are all aliens because of sin that in some sense we've all broken the laws paul reminds us and that we are therefore alienate aliens before god and therefore um, we become justified sanctified saved ultimately not because of our own merits but because of the gracious action of jesus christ who makes possible a return journey to god uh, what's remarkable is that when the great migration happened that is when god left his homeland in heaven if you will and migrated into our sinful and broken world um, he did throw um he came into the womb of Mary, if you will, um, at a time when she was betrothed to, jo to Joseph. Now, to be found to be pregnant by somebody other than your betrothed would have put Mary outside the law. So when she receives news that she's pregnant um, or that she will bear um, the son of God, she goes in haste to her cousin Elizabeth. But if we contemplate this story a little more deeply, uh, we see that one of the reasons why she really would have gone and wanted to go in haste to see Elizabeth, because she knew that if she hung around Nazareth, she could be stoned to death. And that's because she would be out, she would have broken the law to be pregnant by somebody other than Joseph's baby. Now, if that's the case, Jesus was fundamentally an illegal alien from the beginning. He was illegal in the sense that he was proud of her law breaking conception and he was an alien because he literally was from another world so if that's the case why would god choose to save the world through an, an illegal alien All right that should kind of disrupt our imaginations enough to say maybe it's because god began the good news um opening up um a, a pathway of hope for all those outside the law so those who just short those of us who just short circuit the fact that these are illegal aliens and therefore they don't belong don't look deeply enough, because from a Christian perspective, the God that we really follow and worship, you know, had his origin in our world, has an illegal alien. Well, the Eucharist again um, is really about moving from this place of otherness to oneness, which means it means moving into our true self, into the self that God created us to be. And as we get to that true self, we realize that we are fundamentally interconnected, is that what happens to you happens to me. What happens to the migrant also happens to you and to me. And, and so seeing this interconnectedness of reality is something that we can't deny. And this is what will be the great reveal when you know everything is manifested, is just how interconnected we are. So the great measure of, of a person and of a society is how it treats its, its weakest members and how it treats those who are most vulnerable and how we deal with, deal with vulnerability. I mean, it may indeed be the case that we're so re reactive to this issue because they not only symbolize who we are uh, in this world, but they expose who we are and they expose the deep vulnerability that we all experience in this life. And so I think the steps to that are, how do I feel about, first of all, is to say, how do I feel about vulnerability, how to respond to other people who are powerless and vulnerable. Um, um, what is my own sense of relationship to um, those who are different from me? And how do I respond to that difference? Is that a threat or is that something that can actually enlighten and you know expand how I understand myself to be? The, my, the day of migrants and refugees is a reminder to us to move from, as Pope Francis says, a globalization of indifference 
to a globalization of solidarity. Because we are all migrants in this world, it's not about us and them, but it's about all of us. And the more we see this as a collective journey of all of us, I think the more we'll find out uh, and it will be revealed who we're called to be.